says that the Congress and the BJP seem to be in a silent alliance just to ensure that Sidramaya doesn't lose his MLA seat. Basically to say that BJP is not contesting a strong candidate in Varuna, only so that Sidramaya has enough cushion and ensures a win in that constituency. We're going to take you through those details and finally Rahul Gandhi, where the man who was supposed to be coming into Karnataka for this uh, Satyameva Jayate rally that was scheduled for 5th, that's tomorrow, was then later pushed. It was postponed to the 9th, uh, the same day when Prime Minister Modi was supposed to be arriving into Mysuru. And it was internal sources within the Congress said that Rahul Gandhi wants to face off with Modi. It was almost a tucker, uh, the Rahul Gandhi versus uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Karnataka, etc. But it appears now the same Congress as Rahul Gandhi has decided to postpone the rally in Kolar to the 9th of April. BJP is asking, why don't you have guts to face Prime Minister Modi? All that and more in this special state of war. Let me take you through our first breaking here. The Congress now, amid all that chaos and drama on uh, ticket distribution, has finally decided to roll out the second list this evening. In uh, any time now, the Congress will be announcing its second list and it's going to be very interesting. It's the ticket and who does it? We're already seeing enough and more talk and dissent within the party saying that uh, a lot of the loyalists within the party are not being given their due. And joining me right here, first of all, let me introduce this is Vidan Sauda. And Vidan Sauda is uh, a power centre uh, built centuries ago. Kengal Hanumantaya is the man who really built it. And I have with me Shripad, if you can join me on the frame here. Shripad, uh, almost hesitant, I've literally dragged him here. To, uh, to show you right in front of uh, Vidan Sauda, uh, which was built by Kengal Hanumantaya. Basically, Shripad Renu is the grandson of Kengal Hanumantaya. He's been a party loyalist and uh, Shripad today is very disappointed that the Congress has not given him a ticket. He's, he was an aspirant, he was a former candidate from Maleshwaram, but this time around he pushed hard and he, it appears that he's been disappointed, left disappointed. You know, uh, Shripad, why don't you tell our viewers, at, at a time when Sidramaya is asking for two seats from Kohl and Varuna. It's obviously priv privilege. People like you who worked years for the party, your grandfather has built this majestic with Ansauda. You've not been given your due this time. Madam, let's talk about me, okay? As far as I'm concerned, it was the party which asked me to stand last time when 11 days was left for the elections because another candidate had withdrawn. Mm. I, as a party loyalist, stood and did not win, mm. which was obvious. Mm. I have worked in the constituency for the last five years. Mm. But today I have been denied a ticket and given to a new entrant who came to the party just six months ago. Mm. And this man was introduced by one of the leaders uh, of the Congress party itself. Right. That is what I find strange about the party. It is not that they came in search of us. Mm. It is our leaders who went and brought them here mm. for no rhyme or reason. Mm. And the beauty of it is this candidate who they have declared, his uncle is still in the BJP. Mm. So, so where do they stand? A lot of disparity in your view. As much as the no, Congress says there, that they are not biased, uh, that they, they, they are giving uh, tickets to people who have really worked hard, you feel left out. More than left out, I feel cheated. I feel let down. I feel that the Congress party has not recognized the people they need to recognize. Mm. And they have this wonderful world called winability. Mm. If winability is all about money, and if it's only money, then why I even have elections? Wow, that, why don't we make a very rich that, man in India? That's the, a huge charge that you're making. No, that is a fact, but... madam. It's a fact. If winability is money, then why don't we make maybe an uh, Adani or an Ambani or somebody the prime minister of our country? Why have this process? Let us get all the businessmen in the country yeah. and let us hold elections. So you're saying Congress is giving out tickets uh, for money, in exchange yeah. for money? I'm not saying exchange. They are, their idea of winability is they expect the candidate to have tons of money, mm. not persons who have worked for the party. Mm. That is the problem today. You know, Shripad, you stay with us. I uh, request you to stay with us. I'm going to cut across to DK Shiv Kumar, Randeep Surjewala, Sidra Amaya. They're all in Delhi right now. And uh, they've announced formally that the second list is going to come out. And here's what they said in this latest presser. I said in the interview that I am also an aspirant for the Chief Minister post. Likewise, Mr. D.K. Shukumar is also an aspirant for the Chief Minister post. The aim of both of us is to defeat BJP and to bring back Congress party into power.
and the ground reality in Karnataka is there is a wave in favor of Congress party. BJP is going to be defeated. My statement in the interview is misinterpreted. Our aim is only to bring Congress party to power and we will deliver. We will deliver a good government, a government with a governance. We will see that the most corrupt state which has been already uh, given a boon uh, from the BJP will be vanished. We have again decided on a number of seats which you will know once we release the seats by late today. And again unanimously the screening committee and the central election committee has decided a further list of candidates. Now, while the Congress decides to release its uh, second list amid all that drama here, the BJP finally declares that they're going to release their first list on the 8th of April. This is a confirmation coming in with Basaraj Bombay, the Chief Minister himself. And uh, Bombay here says that there is no doubt that the BJP will sweep with a majority in the state. While also taking a jibe and poking at uh, Sidramaya and DK Shivkumar, saying their internal tussle on who's going to be the Chief Minister of the state will really be ultimately their, uh, the, the, the reason for their complete loss. Listen in, Chief Minister Bombay. Murnak Dingli na Belwan ke na government staga, chunau ne hatri ronta sandarb dili, sampurna majority barvon. Murnak Dingli na Belwan ke na government staga, chunau ne hatri ronta sandarb dili, sampurna majority barvon. 1952. heard what uh, Basaraj Bombay had to say. Um, let me cut across to Shripad Renu here, who's uh, with the Congress here. Shripad, uh, while we're standing in front of this beautiful, stunning Vidhan Sauda, why don't you tell me about uh, uh, when this was built and why you felt really that you were deserving. Basaraj Bombay, the Chief Minister, of course, it's a political backlash. They're saying that Sidhu and DK, with uh, you know, amid their fight for who's going to be the CM, that will really be their true reason for their debacle in the state. Do you think Congress in Karnataka is only focused about personal, focused around personal power? Madam, I don't want to get into personal personalities here. The basic thing is, the general mood of the public is, Congress should win this time. Mm. However, the way we are going about in the party, usually we always say we snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Mm. It looks like the way we are going about it, we are going to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. That is how it's going on today. There's a total mismatch in how they're selecting candidates, what they are doing, mm. and this business of winnability is what is ruining the Congress. Mm. Congress by itself, when my grandfather built this Vidhan Sauda, he was the first elected chief minister of the state. He's a congressman, he's a freedom fighter. We have all stood by the party. Yeah. If the party really means what they mean, is this the way for them to behave? You know, and, and I'm asking you exactly what ba Basraj Mumbai, the chief minister, said, that this internal friction is very visible in the Congress. Do you agree that there's a lot of internal dissent? Madam, there's dissent in BJP, there's dissent in Congress. What I have to say is, is very simple. In the Congress party, we talk about saying we are a party which brought freedom to this country. Mm. I am from a freedom fighter's family. Mm. Why did not the party president mm. think about all that before rejecting me? Mm. He should have done that. Like you, I'm sure there are many more who are upset. There are hundreds of them, maybe. I'm not disputing. I cannot talk and, for others. And then there are turncoats who've ditched the BJP and come to Congress. That is exactly the point I'm trying to make, madam. Mm. When you have a party system, then why have a party? That's what I was trying to tell you at the beginning. Mm. Winnability is all about money. Mm. If money is the criteria they want, mm. then why have a party? Then Congress has said that we have done internal surveys. Only who have, uh, who have shown winnability signs are That's going to be... That's exactly what I'm saying. What is their winnability supposed to be? Okay. Let us quantify what is winnability. We, I am talking to you very honestly and properly. Yeah, winnability means this. All right. Shripad, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you and all thank the best you. Uh, to you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. That's Shripad. And again, let me assert that his grandfather built the very beautiful Vidhan Sauda. Years, uh, decades that they've been loyal to the Congress family. So it's evident that this kind of dissent is out there and, and, and visible right ahead of elections. But let me cut across to our biggest uh, news break um, here on the other side is JDS's Supremo, HD Deve Gowda, speaks exclusively to India today while he drops a bombshell and, and makes a very bold statement. He says that the Congress
Congress and the BJP are in a silent alliance here in Karnataka only to protect Sidramaiah from losing his assembly seat in Varuna and which is why the BJP has decided to field a very weak candidate uh, and not a strong one opposite Sidramaiah in Varuna earlier there was a lot of speculation that uh, uh, BS Yadurappa's son Vijendra will be fielded opposite uh, Sidramaiah that was a lot of talk even the BJP high command was hoping that to basically give a tough fight to Sidramaiah but it appears that even Yadurappa himself has gone soft on Sidramaiah let me cut across to this all exclusive interview uh, is there any tactical understanding between you and Congress, or what role you think JDS will play post elections? Can we can we have a post post alliance having between you and Congress party? But well, there's no scope of it. Please. Is there an understanding between BJP and Congress? Earlier, Edirapas and wanted to contest to Varuna. Mm. Now Yadirappa declared, my son will not contest in its Sidramaya. Mm. What does it indicate? You tell me. What does it indicate? You tell me. So you're suggesting that they both are Sailing no, in the same boat. You, you draw your own conclusion, your own what we call inference. Right, we heard that what uh, what uh, HD Devagauda said, but you know, Karnataka is so unpredictable. It's so volatile and unpredictable. You never know what happens next. As much as the JDS says they won't get into an alliance, it possibly will be the JDS itself who will be the kingmaker ultimately like what we saw in 2018. All right, let me cut across to a big news that we got today on Rahul Gandhi deciding that he does not want to come to uh, Karnataka on the 9th of April, the same day that Modi is coming to Mysuru and now has pushed his uh, Satyameva Jayate rally in Kolar to the following day, to basically the 9th, uh, to the 10th of April. This is one day postponement and BJP was quick to hit back and question Rahul Gandhi. Are you scared to face Prime Minister Modi here in Karnataka? Let's take a listen. See, Rahul Gandhi have not guts to face Modi ji anywhere in this world. See, he is a convicted person. Uh, see, where he is having the program in Kolar, that the same case, the Honourable Court has been convicted him as a guilt. He has to come there in Kolar, where he made an allegation related on the OBC in the last election. Okay. Obviously, he has the inferior complex due to that reason. He is not uh, uh, very seriously to attend that program. Across to Sagai Raj, who was himself in Kolar doing a whole ground report. Sagai, what's the reason for Rahul Gandhi to postpone his rally from the 5th of April, it was pushed to the 9th of April when Modi was coming. Internal Congress sources told us that this was deliberately done to face off with Prime Minister Modi, etc. And now all that anticipation goes down the drain because Rahul pushes it to the 10th. What is it? What's the reason? Is Rahul really scared to face off with Prime Minister? The BJP claims that uh, Rahul can't face Prime Minister Narendra Modi and that is one of the reasons that why he has uh, cancelled uh, his, uh, his uh, rally in the state of Karnataka. And if you notice that uh, uh, it was supposed to happen tomorrow, that was on 5th and later on it was put to 9th and now to the 10th. And uh, uh, BJP, anything, anything against uh, uh, the Congress, anything against uh, Rahul Gandhi, they served in the plate. And that is the reason BJP is trying to get political mileage out of this. But if you notice, the program of Prime Minister Narendra Modi is happening in Mysore, and program of Rahul Gandhi was expected to happen in Kolar, which is opposite direction. And what we also get to learn from Congress sources is that uh, on 9th of uh, uh, this week is Easter, and Rahul Gandhi also have a program which is scheduled on Tuesday in Vainad. And just to, in order to uh, get the crowd on the festival day, where KGF and Kolar have large number of uh, Christian population as well, so in order to get the people, uh, it will be a problem. And that might be one of the reasons why uh, uh, that uh, the program has been postponed. And two, the logistics issue, where he can travel immediately after the program in Karnataka to Kerala, which is a neighboring state. And probably that is one of the reasons. And there are other sources right. which also claim that there is an office opening, the Congress office, which has uh, been built 
behind the old office and uh, all right yeah uh, but that's honestly a flimsy that reason you know office opening and which is why he's postponed his date uh, you know not not something that would that that's easily convincing but sagai got your point a huge minority population there in kolar and they're celebrating easter and after that uh, rahul gandhi wants to go to wynard so logistics whatever the reason we've heard that answer thank you very much for joining us on that All right. Let me quickly cut across and finally hear a lot of talk around this cattle trader who was murdered in Ramnagar. The accused, Puneet Kiraharli, who is still absconding, has put out a video here on Facebook saying that it's the Congress and JDS who killed that man, and they are blaming me for it. It's a political murder, and the political parties won't be forgiven. Listen it. What about Muslim man? Now, when do? ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಅದನ್ನ ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಹಾಕುವಂತ ಅಥವಾ ನಮ್ಮ ತಂಡದ ಮೇಲೆ ಹಾಕುವಂತ ಕೆಲಸವನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿ ನೀವು ಮತ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕಿಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಓಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕಿಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಒಬ್ಬ ಮುಸಲ್ಮಾನ್ ಕೊಂದು ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ತಗೊಂಡೋಗಿ ಮಂಡ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ರ್ಯಾಲಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾಟಕ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೀರಿ ಹಾ ಮಾಡ್ರಿ ನೀವು ನಾಟಕನ ತಾಯಿ ಗೋಮಾತೆ ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಯಾರನ್ನು ರಕ್ಷಿಸೋದು All right, you heard that man. He is speaking brazenly right out on the streets. Despite him uh, not be, he is not being arrested. Police say we are looking for him. We are hunting for him, but he still remains out in free. We're going to continue tracking those developments coming in from Karnataka Monday to Friday with me, Nabila Jamal, on my special State of War Karnataka. Thank you very much for watching. be a challenging year for financial uh, for investors of equities uh, if in fi24 and especially keeping in mind that there is uh, always a macroeconomic uncertainty to look at as an overhang on the markets one will have to really be selective about the positions they take and select stocks as well another important factor that i wanted to understand uh, you know in fi23 we actually saw 2.5 lakh crore rupees of bonanza record dii buying that was a saving grace on d street in fi23 for investors meanwhile we actually saw for in institutional investors becoming net sellers for the second consecutive uh, financial year they actually net sold uh, shares worth over 40400 crores this fiscal uh, what i want to understand is will fii's return this year can that be a supportive factor that one can bet on in fi24 yeah i think uh, sakshi for fii's to return i think it would be a little uh, early because i think as uh, all of us know that uh, you know the fed governor mr powell has said that after uh, the recent rate hike possibly another rate hike in uh, this uh, in, a, in this year is possible so i think as and when you know when there is a pause in interest rates in the us possibly that is a time when you could see some flows coming back to india i think uh, on a very uh, broader basis i would believe that after november or december we could see flows coming back in 2024 but 2023 is going to be challenging i think we'll have to depend on domestic sip flows which continue to remain strong and i think fis would continue to pull out money so that definitely would remain a challenge so at least in the very near term uh, one can't expect fis to make a very strong comeback considering that interest rates have started moving up in the us a lot of money has got shifted to debt there so i think we'll have to wait for at least another you know maybe comfortably two or three quarters before we could see a strong flow coming in from the fis once again in the markets but longer term i think they can't ignore us Hello Arjun who made a mark among the Hindi audiences with his impressive performance in Pushpa Amarindra Bahubali and Prabhas who broke into the big league with Bahubali in 2015 and retained the stature with its sequel in 2017 After India Today magazine released issue on July 15th featuring Pushpa star Alu Arjun the cover titled South Swag Prabhas fans dug up a 2017 India Today magazine cover titled Epic Blockbuster featuring the superstar took snap of the same and while drawing comparison called it more organic Alu fans who were raving about the viral July issue cover were met with rebuttal from fans of superstar and Bahubali actor Prabhas Meanwhile his team claimed that Prabhas's PR team is deliberately reviving the older magazine issue as a loose cover gain traction For the unversed both Prabhas and Alu Arjun created a respectable space for themselves in Indian cinema through their work 
Ray, Mandi middle class. Before Pushpa the rise, Alu Arjun delivered a commercial hit, Ala Vaikunta Puramalu. He is also gearing up for the sequel, Pushpa the Rule. The great Vikramaditya. Prabhas, on the other hand, was last seen in Radhi Shah, which turned out to be a box office dud, and is all set to 